Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video tutorial, we're going to learn how to sketch out an Involute Gear Tooth Profile, which will allow us to create the spur gear scene here. So let's go ahead and get started. Come on up to File, and we're going to start a new design. So when designing a gear, you always first want to consider how many teeth you want your gear to have, as well as the pitch, or in other words, how many teeth per inch. So in this instance, we're going to create a gear with 18 teeth and a pitch of two, in other words, two teeth per inch. So the first thing we want to do now is come on up to sketch and we're going to go ahead and create a sketch on our XY plane. All right. So if we know the pitch and we know the teeth, we can calculate the pitch diameter. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and draw the pitch diameter. So if we divide 18, how many teeth our gear has divided by the pitch two that'll give us a diameter of nine inches. So I'm gonna start right here at their origin, draw out a circle, I'm gonna type in nine to give us a pitch diameter of nine inches. And I'm gonna make this circle a construction circle. So the next thing we wanna do now is determine our dedendum distance. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and draw another circle in construction mode here, and I'm gonna make it slightly less than our pitch diameter Okay, I'm going to come on up here. I'm going to dimension this value now between these two circles. This dedendum distance is equal to 1.25 divided by our pitch, or in other words, 2. Hit equals. That'll give us a distance of 0.625. All right, so now let's go ahead and draw out our addendum. So I'm going to start here at the origin and draw out a circle uh, larger than our pitch diameter here. And I'm going to dimension it. So this distance here is equal to one divided by our diametrical pitch, which in this case is two. So one divided by two, hit enter. That'll give us an addendum distance of 0.5. All right, so the last circle we wanna draw out is known as the base circle. And the base circle represents, well, the base of our involute curve. It's where the involute curve starts. And we can calculate the base circle diameter. It's equal to the pitch circle diameter multiplied by the cosine of our pressure angle. In this case, we're going to use a pressure angle of 20 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead now and create another circle. Okay, and if you type in the pitch diameter 9 in your calculator and you multiply that by the cosine of 20 degrees, you get a diameter of 8.45 inches. All right, so the next thing we want to do now is draw a straight a perfectly straight vertical line up to our base circle. So we're going to come on up here, grab our line tool, and draw a straight line perfectly straight up to our base circle. Okay. I'm going to hit escape. Now I'm going to come on over here and I'm going to select circular pattern. And I'm going to select the object that I want to, well, create a pattern of. I'm going to select the center point right here and then I'm going to set the angle here to be 90 so I'm going to move that guy over here okay and then for my quantity here I'm going to kind of well let's set our quantity to 10 hit enter now I have basically 10 equally spaced lines here so you should have 10 equally spaced lines all drawn out to the base circle. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here a bit so we can see what's going on. And now we're going to go ahead and start drawing our profile. To do this, we're going to basically start drawing lines, construction lines, out from these points that are tangent to our base circle. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to grab our line tool. And right now, I'm going to click on this line. And I'm just going to kind of drag it up something in this area right over here okay and I'm also gonna just repeat this procedure basically going across so something like this something like that and I'm gonna do one more and the goal is to make sure that we have enough to get above our addendum circle here. So the next thing we need to do is to make sure that this line distance right here, well, is equal to this arc length distance from here to here. And we can calculate that if we know this angle between 
these two construction lines, and we do. We can dimension that as such, and we get an angle of 10 degrees. And I'm going to go ahead and create a driven dimension just so that stays there. And the other value we're going to need is the radius to our base circle. So I'm going to come on out and I'm going to dimension this guy right here. And I'm going to once again go ahead and allow for a driven dimension for reference purposes. So remember, we need to make this line, this distance of this line here, the same distance as this arc length from here to here. So we need to calculate this arc length. And we can solve for that arc length. That arc length is equal to the arc angle in this case 10 degrees divided by 360 multiplied by 2 pi times our radius 4.225. So if we do the math we get an arc length distance of 0.74 inches. So I'm going to go ahead now and dimension this line here. Okay, Don't do this. Make sure you're dimensioning in this manner right here. I'm going to go ahead and dimension that to be 0.74 inches. So now let's go ahead and start dimensioning our other lines here. And remember, this line needs to be equal to our arc length here times 2. So this distance from this distance. And this line here needs to be equal to 3 arc lengths from here to here. And this one needs to be equal to 4 arc lengths. And this one needs to be equal to 5 arc lengths. So let's go ahead and dimension our lines here. So we're going to click right here. We want this dimension to be 0.74 times 2. Hit enter. We want this dimension here to be equal to 0.74 times 3. And now we want this dimension here to be 0.74 times 4. And then our last one here, 0.74 times 5. And the next thing I want to do now is go ahead and apply what's called tangent constraints. So I'm going to come up here to tangent. I'm going to select this line, and I want it to be tangent to our base circle, so this line. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same for all the other lines. Tangent, this line tangent to our base circle. This line tangent to our base circle this line tangent to our base circle, and then our last line tangent to our base circle. And you can start to see our involute path or curve here start to be generated. I'm going to go ahead and escape. It's important to realize that we should have enough points here so that they go above our addendum circle here, and we're good. Okay, so we have this point here has got us above our addendum point. Now we can start drawing out our profile with our spline tool. So I'm going to go ahead real quick and create a point right here where this vertical line comes in contact with our base circle. I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to come on up and I'm going to grab my spline tool and I'm just going to start drawing out. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm just going to go ahead and click on each point. And then I'm going to right click OK. And I want to change my spline now so that it's not construction. Take that off. And I'm going to come up to trim, and I'm going to trim everything down to our addendum circle. So right there. And I think we're good. I want to hit escape and zoom in just to check here. Actually, I can just click on it, and it looks like we're good. So our spline goes here up to our addendum circle, which is what we want. So the next thing we want to do now is to mirror our spline to create the other side of our gear tooth. All right, and to do that, we're going to need to do some calculations. We're going to need to calculate the gear tooth thickness. And the gear tooth thickness is the distance from, well, one side of our gear along the pitch circle to the other side of our gear tooth along the pitch circle. So like I said, we're going to need to do some calculations. Well, it turns out we can calculate gear thickness using the following formula, where tooth thickness is equal to the pitch diameter, in this case 9 inches, multiplied by sine 
of the angle 90 divided by the number of teeth of the gear. And in this case, we want to have a gear of 18 teeth. So if we punch that into the calculator, we get a tooth thickness of 0.78 inches. But keep in mind, we need half of our gear tooth thickness because in order for us to mirror our gear tooth line here, we need a line that goes right down the middle of our tooth. So we need half of our gear tooth thickness. So to do that, I'm going to create a series of construction lines. So what I'm going to do now is I want to come up to create and I'm going to put a point right where my gear tooth profile crosses the pitch circle here, right there. And be careful because it's right next to one of our other points. Okay, so don't get them confused. I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to draw now a construction line from this point, not this point, the one above it, down to our origin here. Okay. So remember, I know my tooth thickness here along our pitch circle. We know that value is 0.78 inches, but I need half that because in order for me to mirror my spline here, I need to know half the tooth thickness, okay, which I can divide 0.78 divided by 2, and that gives me a distance of 0.39. So that's good. So I know this arc length. I know half the arc length for half of my tooth thickness. So let's go ahead and draw a line to represent that. Okay, so I'm going to click on my line, come down to my origin, click here on my origin and come back up and I'm just going to kind of draw the line and estimate it to be roughly half the tooth thickness, something like that. I'm going to hit escape. So if we know this distance, this arc length from the center of our tooth to the outside of our tooth, which we calculated to be 0.39, half the distance of our tooth thickness. Okay, and we know the radius of our pitch circle, which we do, we can calculate the angle here between our mirror line. So let's go ahead and do that. So this angle right here is equal to the arc length our arc length along our pitch circle right here divided by the radius of our pitch circle. Okay, so if we take 0.39 divided by 4.5, that'll give us, okay, the angle in radians, but we want it in degrees, so we're going to multiply it by 180 divided by pi. So 0.39 divided by 4.5, our radius, okay, multiplied by 180 divided by pi, we get an angle of 5 degrees. So I'm going to come up here to dimension this guy. Click here, and I'm going to make that 5. So now that we've determined our mirror angle here, we can go ahead and draw out the rest of our tooth profile. So I'm going to come up to my line tool. Make sure you're not in construction mode. I'm going to draw a line sort of straight down along this line and I want that distance to be 0 0.108 inner. And now I'm going to come on up and I'm going to create a root fillet radius with a three point arc. So I'm going to come over here to my three point arc. I'm going to click on the end of that line somewhere down here along my dedendum here. I'm going to just kind of click and I want it to be tangent, something like that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit escape. All right, now I want to come to dimension and I want this distance from the start of our arc to the end of our arc to be 0.235, hit enter, and that should give us a root fillet radius of roughly a quarter of an inch, and it does. I'm going to go ahead and escape. So now that half of our gear tooth profile is drawn, let's go ahead and mirror it, come on up to create come down to mirror and just select there, select there, select there. I'm going to select my mirror line right there and select OK. Now I want to go ahead and close my sketch loop and create two arcs at the top and the bottom of our gear. So let's come up to create, come down to arc and grab our three point arc tool. I'm going to click where I want to start the arc, click where I want to end the arc and make sure it's right on our addendum there. Do the same thing down here, click where I want to start the arc and click where I want to end the arc, 
and then I'm going to basically make sure it's on my dedendum here. Okay, and now we have a closed loop, and we can extrude it. I'm going to hit escape. But before we extrude it, very quickly, I want to go ahead and just check to make sure that my gear tooth thickness is correct. So I'm going to come to create. I'm going to put a point right here where my pitch circle crosses uh, my gear tooth. I'm going to come up to dimension. And if we did it right, we should have a gear tooth thickness of roughly 0.785 point or so. Yep, it looks pretty good. I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to go ahead and finish my sketch. And I'm going to go ahead and extrude this guy out a distance of one inch. Select OK. Now let's go ahead and use the circular pattern to create the 18 teeth. So we're going to come down to pattern, come over here to circular pattern. We are going to come on over here, make sure it says features, click on our feature. Okay, for our axis, let's come on over here to sketches and make sure we can see our sketch. And we're going to want to rotate our teeth around our dedendum circle here. So I'm going to go ahead and select our dedendum circle. And remember, we wanted 18 teeth. So I'm going to type in 18, select OK. Now let's come back into our sketch. I'm going to make my dedendum circle here. I'm going to make sure that it, it is not a construction line anymore. Go ahead and finish our sketch. And let's extrude out that to be one inch. Go ahead and select OK. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my sketch visibility. All right, now let's go ahead and start a sketch on this surface here so we can create our axis hole. And I'm just going to create a one inch circle, something simple. Finish my sketch. Extrude this guy and cut it out. Minus one inches. Go ahead and select OK. And the last thing we're going to do is go ahead and modify it. Let's give it a physical material of aluminum 6061. So go to metal, come on down to aluminum 6061. Select close. Let's give it a cool sort of appearance. So we'll go to mirror that and then go ahead and select close. All right. And now that we have a material, we can come up to document settings, go to properties, and we get all sorts of good data. The surface area, density, mass, volume, all that good stuff. And when you're all done, don't forget to save it. That'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.